नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स टुडे बिकॉज ऑफ द रिसर्जेंस ऑफ कोविड इन इंडिया एंड लैक ऑफ ऑक्सीजन लॉट्स ऑफ पीपल आर सफरिंग सो आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक टू यू नॉट एज अ स्पिरिचुअल पर्सन बट मोर लाइक अ मेडिकल फिजिशियन विथ रिगार्ड्स टू एविडेंस बेस्ड मेडिसिन वॉट प्रैक्टिस यू कैन डू एट होम if you are not able to get admitted to a hospital if you don't have access to oxygen how you should treat yourself for covid-19 symptoms and again as a disclaimer this is uh, just uh, advice and this is my opinion and you should still consult your medical doctor about uh, the specifics of these treatments and what should be applied in your case so my friends a uh, lot of people will have very non descript symptoms symptoms such as dry cough shortness of breath fatigue muscle aches fevers now fevers in general you should understand that allergies do not cause fevers if you say there is a change in the environment from uh, winter into the spring or spring into the summer of course there is blooming of uh, flowers pollen and there is Uh, those rhinitis congestion sinusitis itching of the eyes throat scratching cough can happen but fever makes you think if there's a viral component something else is going on especially when so many people have covid outbreaks more likely that you are having mildly symptomatic or even asymptomatic covid infections now once we know that beds are limited in the hospital how do you treat yourself with covid with the help of some basic ideas so i will talk about uh, some ayurvedic practices some uh, nutritional supplements which have some medical evidence and of course uh, the medicinal treatments which are uh, for the most part used in the hospitals but you can access some of them even at home if you have symptoms suggestive of covid of course if you have been tested positive for covid through the nasopharyngeal rt pcr test not more so the antigen test okay so now let us see what are the treatments first thing i want you to know is that you have to get one of these things called the pulse oximeters so this is a very uh, easy to use uh, uh, thing you can use at home and basically what it does is it is recording your heart rate and respiratory rate you have to insert it inside the nail and then the nail don't have any nail polish or colors because it tracks the hemoglobin red pigment in blood to determine your oxygen concentration so very important that you put your finger the nail inside index finger middle finger and wait for some time at least 30 seconds before it will tell you most individuals will have an oxygen saturation that is above 90 it can be 88 if you have copd asthma but most folks will have 90 and higher 99 100 is the best especially for kids the older folks will be more like 94 95 and if you like prone which is we will talk about it gets better so pulse socks should be with you at your home because that is one way to track your baseline oxygen saturation to know if your oxygen is falling in which case you need to do more of this stuff you need to get access to oxygen or some other practices so number 1 is get a pulse oximeter and we want your oxygen concentration to be 88% or higher at rest when you are not working okay now what do we do if we are having symptoms of covid fevers chills shortness of breath we have our oxygen dropping especially what else can you do number one thing you can do <clears throat> and again i will teach about the medical treatments first and then the ayurvedic and supplement because the medical is something which will provide you instant relief if you can get access to it first thing you do is go to the shop and get something called albuterol inhaler if you are having difficulty breathing like asthmatics have problems shortness of breath tightness of the chest a uh, sense of drowning those kind of things if you have what we call dyspnea dyspnea is the feeling of shortness of breath for this first thing you have to do is go and get an albuterol inhaler you can get albuterol inhaler you can get simbicort and again some of these are 
difficult treatment that should be done in the hospital but if you don't have access to the hospital and you know you have covid and shortness of breath you can use it for few days most likely there won't be any issues and it will help you open up your airways bring up your oxygen but what do you use you use either what we call bronchodilator the inhalers uh, meter dose inhaler mdi but what i want you to buy is basically the thing that you puff and then you take the air in and that will help to dilate the airways albutrol is simply uh, going to dilate the airways whereas simbicot also is a steroid so it can dilate with reduction of the inflammation because oxidative stress cytokine storm that is the main cause of death in alveoli uh, ARDS from COVID so you want to get an inhaler of course you want to get an oxygen but we are talking about situations in which you cannot have access to oxygen if your uh, oxygen is dropping then what else you can do of course nasal cannula will help now you can get it through the oxygen tanks what we call concentrators if you have access to one of those uh, somewhere but if you cannot have those things other things you can do to increase your oxygen which i have talked a lot in my basic videos but still i will repeat it remember the damage let me draw this diagram here this is what we call the alveoli the alveoli are the small airways that are going to be squeezing in and out when we are breathing this is our lung okay so there will be many alveoli like this now the problem is when you have inflammation inflammation is uh, four characteristics tumor rubor calor dolor functia lacio which means five which means swelling redness there is loss of function and there is uh, heat so the swelling is what causes damage here when the swelling of the walls happens they are not able to contract and expand very well okay so the alveoli are squished together they are going in and then they are going out too much of wear and tear can happen so what the idea is to keep it perpetually open don't let it fall down because when it falls down the oxygen escapes from the lung you want to trap the oxygen in your lungs and that is why we use the theory of peep peep is called positive and expiratory pressure which means you want to keep the alveoli or the small sacs in the lung perpetually open don't let them collapse because you want the oxygen to remain there one harm is there oxygen needs to go in but the carbon dioxide needs to go out if carbon dioxide is building up it is bad but it is not as bad as not having oxygen which will kill you so peep increment can be done through the ventilation the ventilator of course now at home you don't have ventilator and breathing tubes when people are dying i'm talking not talking about simple people i'm talking about people who are dying who are on ventilators you don't want to be there obviously so in that case what can replicate the increase of peep which is the end expiratory pressure expansion kumbhak kriya kumbhak kriya is one thing which has combined uh, the the beauty of pranayama with the beauty of today's medical science what is happening in kumbhak think about it i take a big breath mm. now i hold my breath all the oxygen is trapped and expanding the alveoli now, if i don't breathe out it is automatically creating high amount of pressure the longer you hold it and when you let go <clears throat> you are totally empty so you have to fill it again so kumbhak kriya is replicating peep and is giving you effect similar to the ventilator early in the disease i'm not talking about late disease where you are getting a ventilator tube and you are on paralytics and everything i'm talking about ways to help you at home if you do not have access to hospital so that is the topic today kumbhak kriya in some ways helps you increase and maintain the positive end expiratory pressure keep doing kumbhak kriya every day as much as you can deep breath in hold it for 10 20 30 seconds depending on your shraddha and ability and then 1 4 2 2 inhale for 1 Uh, hold it for four times then slowly exhale for two and remain empty for two this is replicating your peep technology so this is one beautiful way of creating high amount of oxygen in the lungs at baseline and you can do kumbhak kriya as long as your stomach is empty i don't want you to do it on a full stomach so anyways you can do kumbhak this is going to help you in a lot of ways anulom vilom is fine but kumbhak kriya the retention of oxygen and air 
in the alveoli is what's going to help you the most. Okay, so Kumbhak Kriya is very important. Now, what else can you do? One treatment which you can do, again, consult your doctor. This is not medical advice, but this is the regimented treatment for severe COVID, supposed to help with both oxidative stress and cytokine storm, is steroids. Now, always consult your doctors before taking steroids, but this is one way to avoid the hospital, especially if there are no beds and no oxygen. So, Marta Gyana Karta, best thing is to do these things early so that you don't get the disease. Steroids, the treatment here in US, we are using dexamethasone which is 6 milligrams tablet oral daily. We can use it as many as 10 days or till discharge, whichever sooner, but 7 to 10 days sounds like a very reasonable period. Not many side effects, diabetics might get high sugar, but dexamethasone is a very good treatment. The second thing you can do, if you don't have dexamethasone 6 milligram, or you can use prednisone. Prednisone is available everywhere. Prednisone uh, most people 20 to 40 milligrams, 40 milligrams if you have more disease, daily again, oral uh, for 7 to 10 days is a good deal. Again, there are side effects of steroids, but they, they are way less than dying from COVID if your oxygen is dropping. So steroids is the number one treatment. Remdesivir, I know there's a lot of craze about it. Yes, if you get it, it's good in the hospital setting, but steroids are way more important for severe COVID than remdesivir. Steroid is cheap, you can get it from the medical shop and it will help you with all the symptoms of COVID related to cytokine storm, which is the hallmark of COVID, especially in people with Pitta Prakriti. Pitta people aged between 20 to 45, 50, those are the maximum guys which have the inflammatory component. Older people have more Vata tendencies through the degenerative component of uh, uh, from COVID, but Pitta is what is going to kill you more. And degenerating condition will make you suffer but not kill you so much. That is why mortality is high in younger folks, you will see, because of the Pitta condition. Inflammatory, you have to kill the inflammation. Problem of COVID is two things. I talked about oxidative stress, which is oxidation of the uh, cellular level, and what we call the cytokine storm, which is the release of all these chemicals in the lungs, which are causing drowning of the alveoli in ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome. So my friends, steroid is the other treatment you can use. Beyond that, there's monoclonal antibodies, remdesivir, uh, some uh, other monoclonal antibodies that have come out, but those are not accessible to you at home. So this is some basic treatments you can do. What other things you can do? Come to the Ayurvedic component. As I said, Ayurvedic component, you have to know that COVID is a problem of Vata and Pit, it is not a so much problem of a Kapha. That is why kids who have high Kapha, they don't get so much COVID. Older people, especially middle-aged people, will have very bad infection, very quick reaction, quick worsening and dying from COVID because of the Pitta pro-inflammatory condition. So Pitta condition, just maybe, uh, whoever has high content of Pitta is more prone to getting COVID. So Pitta people, Vata people will suffer more and will have higher risk of getting it. So you have to reduce the VAT and you have to reduce the pit. How do you reduce the VAT? I have talked about so many times. You can do exercise, especially exercise that is aerobic, increasing your heart rate, respiratory rate. You can do Kumbhak again is kind of an exercise. You can do steam sauna. Again, steam is good because Vata is dryness. You want to have some sort of moisturizing in your body. So steam sauna will help you sweat, release the toxins. That's why steam sauna helps. Steam showers will help. Those kind of things that perspire and make you sweat. Sweating is the key in Vata. In summer, hopefully you can sweat a lot. So those things you have to do in, of course, uh, social isolation and uh, keeping distance from other folks. But these are the Vata things you can do. And then Vata reduction, Vata reducing diet. Vata reducing diet. So, you know, uh, sweet, sour, salty, I can say good for bath, but let's, uh, for bath, reduction bath. But let's come to pitta. Pitta exci exciting foods again are spicy foods and salty foods. And <clears throat> of course, pitta people should be eating foods which are sweet, uh, bitter, astringent. Now remember that the people of uh, vata should be eating sweet, salty and pungent 
Now you know that viruses, we should not eat so much of sweet. So sweet is out. Sweet you cannot eat. Salty and pungent foods will also aggravate the pitta. See here, there is no salty pungent. So salty and pungent is also out. What is left? Left is bitter and to some extent astringent. So these are the foods that you have to eat in uh, uh, COVID symptoms. What foods are bitter? Well, you know that. Neem, karela, giloy, loki, anything that has a bitter taste. Bitter taste. That is good for reduction of the pitta, reduction of the cytokine storm, oxidative stress. Astringents, things like cauliflower, cabbage, your cloves, uh, even things like ajwain. So ginger, those things are good for you because they are going to increase the heat inside the body to some extent. And also because toxins are removed from the astringents and bitter foods. Bitter foods and astringent foods are, especially bitter ones, are detoxifying the body. That's why neem is good. I used to put neem tail, neem oil in my nostrils one drop before I used to go see COVID patients. So very important, my friends, to get this idea of eating the right foods and eating in moderation. Don't eat sweets and don't overeat because you have to do a lot of kumbha. Kumbha ke liye, you want the stomach to be empty. So very important that you keep your stomach empty, eat once or twice a day, small quantity of meal, easily digestible meal, things like uh, dalia or you can eat uh, moong dal, you can eat uh, sabudana, anything that is easily uh, digestible and then you have to eat lot of bitter foods, warm bitter foods. You can make soup out of it. You can also drink tomato soup but more so you have to make soup out of uh, the karela juice or the neem. Uh, you will neem, you can eat leaves, but karela juice or the giloy juice, you can, uh, loki juice, you can warm it and drink. The warm is also going to help. So the next point is warm because vata uh, likes cold. So vata disorder is destroyed by warm. Drink warm water all day. So I told you about foods. I told you about water. Alkaline water is great. Warm water is great. Ginger water is great. Those kind of things. And then comes the air. For air, you do kumbhak. For fire, you do exercise and of course, dhyan is always going to help you relax, increase the GABA, help you get better sleep. Because the better sleep is another topic I want to talk about. Sleep at least 7 hours. Sleep at least 7 hours and the sleep that you get before midnight is rich in N3, slow wave delta sleep. Sleep that helps to increase the immunity. It makes your immunity strong so you don't catch it even if you're affected by it. So make sure you do a lot of dhyan when you wake up as well as when you go to sleep. But more importantly, get at least 7 hours of sleep because the body needs to restore and repair all the damages that have occurred both on the cellular and the physical level. So you have to sleep 7 hours a day and uh, keep your body protected through these Ayurvedic practices. The last thing is some supplements. Some supplements which have shown some uh, emerging evidence that it is supposed to be helping with COVID. So what are those supplements? The first thing that I want to mention is vitamin D. There has been a big study in India which has shown that 50,000 international units uh, of vitamin D daily taken for 7 days is supposed to be helping. If you don't want to do 50,000, you can do the regular 5,000 international units. 5,000 international units a day, every day, you can take very easily. That's supposed to help with your immunity. To some extent, we have found that vitamin C can also help, but vitamin C you can naturally get from oranges and citrus fruit like lime. So that will be my advice to take the natural fruits more than uh, these chemical supplements. The other thing is known as N-acetylcysteine. If that is available in your uh, place, 600 milligram tablet, uh, you can take uh, two times a day. Again, uh, these are things that you have to consult with your doctor. You don't take it like this. Some evidence that quercetin can help. Uh, some evidence that zinc, elemental zinc, 40 milligrams can help. You can try those things as well. But the idea is that these things are supplements. They're not going to help you uh, cure anything. They will just be providing you some support while you are having the illness. So 40 milligrams of elemental zinc a day, that can also be tried. So these are some of the 
supplements that will work. Neem tail put in the nostrils is amazing. Drinking warm water, gargling with warm water, peroxide or beta diet to release the sore throat is great. Albutrol inhaler is great to open up the airways, relieve the cough. Taking a little bit of steroid through the either the nostril flonase, fruticasone, uh, uh, nostril, uh, you can do it for the sinusitis or sembicord or stuff like that. Again, these are treatments, but if you cannot find a place to go in the hospital, these are some things to consider after talking to a regular doctor medical provider now one more thing you can do at home especially because if you have some family member who has covid and you are isolating from him this is very uh, common to our own culture is to do dhumi dhup so the puja dhup the black sticks of dhup that you have that you use it for archana puja you will burn it and let it fumigate create fumes all around the house because those fumes are going to kill the aerosol particles that are containing the coronavirus. So it's a great way to defumigate the house, especially if you have someone who has COVID or if you know that you went outside and you're coming inside and you can be bringing those germs with you. So the fumigation is a great way to cause decontamination of the environment in which you are lying. Fumigation with the puja dhup, the black colored sticks. So my friends, these are the main things you can do. One last thing I want to talk about, I talked about uh, oxygen and the idea of using uh, Kumbha Kriya as a modality of PEEP. The other thing you can do is proning. Whenever you get a person with COVID who has dropping oxygen on the pulse oximeter or even like this, at night time, your mentality should be that I am going to sleep on my belly. I am going to sleep on my stomach all night, every night. If I cannot sleep on the stomach, I will sleep a little bit on the side. But don't sleep on the back. Why? Because when you sleep on the tummy, you are opening up the posterior aspects of your lungs. And that is what is getting squished in COVID. That is why Kumbha Kriya is helping open the airways as I showed you. That is why Kumbha Kriya is helping open up the airways to increase the oxygen concentration so that you don't have dropping of the oxygen, which is the main reason for people dying. So sleep on your back. I'm sorry, sleep on your uh, chest and uh, stomach and sleep uh, as much as you can possible on this or the left lateral position, uh, any, any side position. Don't sleep on your back because that will reduce the opening of the airways and drop your oxygen more. Weight loss is great. Kumbha Kriya, do as much as you can do. Take deep breath, hold it, let go. Don't breathe rapid shallow. No, not this one. Watch my video on Kumbha Kriya. You will understand a lot about the technique of breathing. But that is the way to open up the airways and reduce the oxygen need that you are not able to get it. So my friends, oxygen, albutrol inhaler, symbicot inhalers, prone position, fumigation of the house, using neem tail in your nostrils every day, drinking the giloy juice or the juice of aloe vera as well as lauki and doing all these practices that I talked about, panch pratyahara, intermittent fasting, warm alkaline water, kumbha kriya, exercise that makes you sweat and dhyana. Strong, good sleep, 7 hours so that N3 delta sleep is increased, growth hormone is increased, antibody immunity is better. Even when you go for vaccination, sleep 7 hours before that. We have found studies that people who sleep sleep have a better immune response. They will form more antibodies that can fight against the virus. So good sleep is very important. All of these things should be done. If you have any questions, please feel free to email us and we are more than happy to help you from a medical standpoint as much as we can. Jai Shri Ram.